would like to welcome our dearest viewers via Nursat and Tele Lumiere. We shall begin with the significant headlines. Pope Francis expresses his pain and closeness to the Moroccan and Libyan people. His Majesty the King instructs the government to provide all necessary assistance to Morocco and Libya. Warnings in Jerusalem against obliterating the city's identity and Israelizing its Arab curricula. The Committee for Church Affairs in Palestine condemns the attack by the occupation on religious sites. A spiritual visit by Dr. Basim al samaan to the Holy Land to explain the message of Nur Sat in spreading peace to the world. Welcome back. Pope Francis expressed his sorrow and solidarity with the Moroccan and Libyan people in the wake of the devastating earthquake that struck Morocco and the hurricane that hit Libya. In two signed messages, His Holiness affirmed his closeness to the victims and their families through prayers as soon as he received the painful news. He conveyed his deep solidarity with those affected by this tragedy, both physical and emotional. The Supreme Pontiff offered prayers for the souls of the deceased, the recovery of the injured, and the solace for those mourning the loss of their loved ones and homes. The papal message concluded by emphasizing the Pope's prayer to God for strength and support for the Moroccans and Libyans in this ordeal. He also praised the civil authorities and the rescue teams working diligently to provide assistance and support to the affected individuals, while invoking divine blessing upon everyone. In the same context, His Majesty King Abdullah II offered his condolences for the victims of the earthquake that struck several cities and regions in Morocco, as well as the hurricane and the flooding that affected multiple areas in Libya. His Majesty directed the government to provide all necessary assistance to our afflicted brethren in Morocco and Libya and to dispatch humanitarian and relief aircraft to the two sister countries, wishing for continued security and tranquility for the Moroccan and Libyan people. Furthermore, the Jordanian embassies in Morocco and Libya confirmed that they have not received reports of Jordanian residents or visitors in the affected areas experiencing fatalities or injuries. The High Presidential Committee for Church Affairs in Palestine called on churches worldwide and international institutions to condemn the crimes committed by Israeli occupation forces against Islamic and Christian holy sites in the city of Jerusalem. They urge for a serious stance against any desecration of these sacred places and the immediate provision of international protection for religious sites in the Old City. The committee strongly condemned the attack carried out by Israeli occupation forces on the Bab al rahme prayer hall in Al-Aqsa Mosque which resulted in vandalism and destruction of its contents. In a statement issued by its chairman, Dr. Ramzi Khouri, the committee emphasized that these repeated attacks on Christian and Islamic holy sites in Jerusalem are part of the comprehensive war waged by the occupation and extremist settlers on religious places in the holy city to impose a fate a comply on it. In another context, activists in the city of Jerusalem have called for the necessity of preserving the Hashemite custodianship over the Christian and Islamic holy sites, as well as protecting those sacred sites and their affiliated schools within the Jerusalem sanctuary, whether they are Christian or Islamic schools. This warning comes in the context of the Israeli authorities' attempt to change the reality of Jerusalem and its Christian and Islamic religious heritage. They seek to impose the Israeli curriculum on Arab schools, replacing the previously applied Jordanian curriculum until the year 2000. Furthermore, the Israeli authorities have introduced materials into the curriculum that align with their agenda, such as changing the names of cities, undermining the Arab language and national heritage. Additionally, the occupational authorities have devised a plan known as the Israelization of the educational system in Jerusalem, involving the removal of all aspects related to Arab identity, changing the names of Palestinian cities, historical and cultural landmarks in Jerusalem, and the promotion of Israeli identity. Dr. Basim al-Sam'an, the director of the Nur Saad Jordan and Palestine branch, visited the holy sites in Jordan and Palestine to seek blessings. During her visit, she also met with the heads of churches in Jerusalem, as well as several bishops, priests, and officials to discuss future plans and work arrangements for the Nur Saad office in Palestine. Dr. Sam'an was accompanied on her tour by Jordanian activist Rebecca Ode and Nur Saad representative in Palestine, Marlene al -Hadwe. One of the prominent meetings took place with His Betitude Patriarch Theophilus III at the Patriarchate in Jerusalem. During the meeting, His Betitude was informed about the achievements and activities of the Nur Saad team in Jordan and Palestine, as well as their upcoming media work planned for Jerusalem. As a token of love, she presented His Betitude with an Arabic mosaic artwork. His Betitude welcomed Dr. Sam'an, expressing gratitude for her outstanding efforts in serving the local church and their continuous work. 
There was another meeting with his Beatitude Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzabella, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, who wished for the Nursat office in the Holy Land to continue excelling and succeeding in broadcasting audio and visual content to the entire world through its satellite channels. Dr. Sam'an presented her book documenting the visit of Catholic popes to the Holy Land as a token of love. Dr. Sam'an also met with the accompanying delegation, including His Eminence Archbishop Hatallah Hanna, the head of the Orthodox Archbishop of Sebastia. They engaged in an extensive discussion about Jerusalem, its holy sites, and the challenges facing the Palestinian in their homeland. His Eminence expressed his wishes for the health, success, and continued excellence of all those working in the media. Delegation also visited churches and historical sites for a blessing and met with many priests, officials, and parish committees. The visit concluded with a participation in the Sunday Mass at the Church of the Nativity of the Virgin Mary for the Orthodox community in Sakhnin, where they also met with its pastors and committees. It is noteworthy that this year's visit to the Holy Land was aimed at preparing various programs and organizing the broadcast of services and prayers live on air with the blessing of the heads of the churches in order to convey the Christian message to the entire world. The number of visitors to the site of the baptism of Jesus Christ has increased by 81% since the beginning of the current year until the end of August, compared to the previous year. Engineer Rostam Mukajian, the General Director of the Baptism Site Commission, stated that the number of visitors to the site during the past eight months reached 150,000 pilgrims and visitors. The highest percentage of visitors came from Italy, followed by Spain, the United States, France, and Greece. Visitors from Arab countries were predominantly from Lebanon, while domestic tourism saw an 8% increase. Mikajian explained that efforts are underway this year to increase the number of visitors and pilgrims to achieve new records, not previously witnessed at the baptism site. This is especially significant since the site has gained international recognition after being included on the map of global religious tourism. The site holds numerous messages of harmony, love, and peace for all humanity, and it is the historical location of the baptism of Jesus Christ. The first lecture of the 19th cycle of the Khatamain ala Sakhrat al-Rabb program was held at the Cathedral of the Annunciation in Abdali. The event was attended by approximately 40 speakers and preachers. The session began with a prayer by Reverend Economist Irinius Mdanat, the head of the Family of Marriage Office. Following the prayer, Dr. Maher Zabane, a consultant in kidney, reproductive, infertility, and sexual health surgery, delivered a lecture. This was followed by a session with Dr. Maryam Ghanma, a consultant in obstetrics, gynecology and fertility, and Samar Tadrus, the social counselor. The lecturer wished the speakers happiness, stability, and blessings in their marriages. We have reached the end of our broadcast, dear viewers. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. Pope Francis expresses his pain and closeness to the Moroccan and Libyan people. His Majesty the King instructs the government to provide all necessary assistance to Morocco and Libya. Warnings in Jerusalem against obliterating the city's identity and Israelizing its Arab curricula. The Committee of Church Affairs in Palestine condemns the attacks by the occupation on religious sites. A spiritual visit by Dr. Basim Sam'an to the Holy Land to explain the message of Nursat in spreading peace to the world. For more information, please visit our website, nursatjo.org. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again. Have a good day.